I surrender all I surrender all I surrender all come on and give him a praise today Hallelujah. yes Lord wonderful Savior today we thank the Lord for his goodness, his kindness that he continues to show towards us. God is good. Thank you, Lord. Give him all praise today for his loving kindness, for the abundance of his grace. Thank him today for his peace. Thank you, Lord. That surpasses all understanding. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, I, I, sense, I sense today that God wants to do something different. He's going to do something different in our presence. Amen. But be, I do have a, a word and I do have a scripture that I want to share with you, but I believe that the Lord is going to uh, just we're deviating just a bit. Um, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. First, I want to I want to ask everybody to just stand for a moment. There's three families that I just want us to pray for today, or three individuals, or I guess families as well. Uh, first would be uh, the Colberts and the Jones families. Amen. What they experienced over this, this last week or two has not been an easy walk. But we thank God, amen, for the fact that that they know the Lord. Yeah. Amen. See, that makes all that makes all the difference in what it is that we experience and what we go through in life. So we want to pray for the Colbert and Jones families. But we also want to pray for Elder Norman. I understand he returned to the hospital on this morning. And he is asking us to uh, to keep him in prayer. So we want to pray for Elder Norman. Amen. Again, the joy that we have is that he knows the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And then I want to pray for Sister Karen. Um, even though it was her daughter that was uh, hospitalized on last weekend and went through that seven-hour surgery, amen, to, re to remove a tumor that was wrapped around her vertebrae. And the thing there is that the last time that I spoke with Alicia was right here in this sanctuary one afternoon, and we prayed with her, um, and we invited her to completely surrender to the Lord. And in that conversation, the Lord gave me to know that the reason why, <clears throat> at least one of the reasons why, that she was not a friend or fond of church was because she had suffered church hurt. And, I, and the word that God gave me for her was that you forgive and God will heal. 
that you need to forgive and just remind yourself, Lord, I forgive, I believe. That was the words I told her that she needed to repeat to continually. Lord, I forgive, I believe. So many times, you know, we can suffer church hurt. Amen. We can, uh, we can allow what people say or do towards us to impact our, uh, our lack of enthusiasm for fellowshipping with the people of God when we know that that's where we need to be. So we want to pray for her as well. Thank you, Lord. If there's anyone else in the house right now, that has a situation that you need God to move in and you know that it's God that you need to move because you've been struggling with this thing far too long. Amen. I want you to just lift your hand where you are right now. Just lift your hand. Thank you, Lord. Oh, that's too many people. Thank you, Lord. That's too many people. Thank you, Lord. We Hallelujah. We, we cannot continue to come to, into the presence of God, amen, and, and return over and over again, yet feeling bound and burdened by things that have lingered in our hearts and our minds and in our lives, amen, for more than a day. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. I say more than a day, and, and maybe that's a bit facetious. Amen. But guess what? My mind. When we trust God, amen, the psalmist says, Great peace have they which love that law, and nothing shall offend them. We have to understand that sometimes the offense is going to come. Sometimes the challenges are going to come. But guess what? When you know that the word of God says, Great peace. See, the peace that we have, the joy that we have, God has given it to us. The world didn't give it. Why let the world take it away? Oh, my, my. Thank you, Lord. Jesus says, I give you peace. I give you joy, not as the world give, give I unto you. Jesus has given us this peace. He has given us this joy, but we let the words of the world take it away. Don't you know you need that joy? You need that joy because it's with that joy that you draw water from the wells of salvation. It's with that joy that you're able to continue to press your way into God's presence. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, today, we surrender it to you right now, God. Ah, God, you've given us grace to come boldly to your throne, O oh God. You've given us the power and the, you've given us access, God, to come boldly to your throne of grace that we might obtain, hallelujah, favor and strength, oh God, in our time of need. God, we thank you today. Lord, is that even before we receive a word today, God, God, we thank you for the grace. We thank you for the abiding presence. We thank you, Lord God, for the overcoming power. We thank you today, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, that truly we will not leave this house today, this place, oh God, the same way we came. But God, we're going to leave today, God, rejoicing, God, in the name of our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ, God. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, God. Hey, glory. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Rain on us today, God. Hallelujah. Pour out your blessing, God. 
Pour out your blessing, God. Ha, huh, glory, glory. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Ah, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Ah, thank you, God. Yes, Lord. Ah, thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Somebody say this. Say, burden. Enough is enough. Thank you, God. Oh, glory to God. Somebody say, struggle. Enough is enough. God, as we continue in our worship today, Father, I pray that you will minister to the need of your people like never before. Oh, God, work in us, move in us, Lord, by the power of the Holy Ghost. Have your way, oh, Lord God. Have your way, Lord. God, and we glorify you. We honor you. We praise you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah and amen. Come on and give him a praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God is truly, truly good. And we praise him. I get my choice. too hot. Take some of that gain out for me, please. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Still way too hot. I can hear myself breathing. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. More. Really? This morning, this morning, I want to I want to talk to you about two words, and those two words are struggle and press. Now, I want to do a, I want a demonstration here. I need two strong men. No, big, big Andrew, yeah. Two strong men. I need two strong men. Uh, let's see here. How are we going to do this? Um, tell you what. No, 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 no. Come up here. Okay. Now I know this is this is not a, a level platform, but huh? What's the matter? Oh, the children are going out? Okay, I'm sorry. We will dismiss our youngin. Okay. And while they're going out, I'm getting ready to give some instruction here. Okay. Okay. All right. Actually what I what I want.
So, so what, I'm, what I've asked these two brothers, these two strong men, amen, and actually these are the two that I had in mind when I thought about this this morning. Uh, what, I, what I asked them to do is come up and I want them to arm wrestle, okay? <laughs> so we got youth against, well, he's not quite a senior yet, but, but he's, but he's, but he's middle age, I guess. <laughs> 24. <laughs> 24, no. Okay, so what I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask them to arm wrestle, but I want you to observe them I want you to observe what you see in their, in their posture. Observe what you see in their face. Observe what they see. Okay? All right? Go ahead. Let me see. All right? All right. Go. Okay. But no, no wait a minute. No, not yet. <laughs> Because it's not really not a struggle right now, is that? Yeah. Okay. All right. Come on. Let me see it again. Already? Go. All right. Now, right now, what I see is I see two men who are equally strong. Okay. Do you see a struggle in either one of them? No. no you don't see a struggle in either. But there, but there is, there is, there is strength there. Okay. If I push in either direction, there's strength there. Okay. And we don't, and we don't see a struggle. Now what I'm going to ask them to do is I'm going to ask them to really arm wrestle, and I want one of them to win. Okay? All right? Go. <laughs> All right. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Look at those guns. <laughs> okay, now, 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 did you see struggle? You did see struggle, okay? You saw struggle in the arms, okay? Where else did you see struggle? In the face. You saw struggle in the face, okay? All right? All right? Okay, good. Thank you. Come on, let's get it in my hand. Now, the reason why, matter of fact, let me give you, let me give you a scripture. The reason why I asked them to do that, because the only time people really know that you're struggling in your life is if you tell them or you show them. That's the only time. But I want, I want to show you something today that I'm hoping is going to help us going forward. Okay? Go to, uh, go to first, mm, let's go to Philippians first. Okay? Philippians chapter 3. And begin at verse 13. Philippians 3 and 13 says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Verse 14. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Okay? Now I want you to go to, uh, now keep your finger there. I want you to go to 2 Timothy. And go to 2 Timothy, um, 2 Timothy 2. And oh, that's not Timothy. Second Timothy two and go to Oh begin at verse one. Second Timothy two beginning one. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, 
who shall be able to teach others. Verse 3, thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. Okay? No man that warreth against it warreth, entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. Okay? So what I want to do today with these two scriptures is show you how that there really is no difference between the struggle and the press. Because both of them, both of them require action. In other words, when you talk about struggling, you're talking about a uh, you're, you're you're talking about a, a force to resist, okay, an applied force to resist something that is coming against you. Struggling, therefore, we can say is a def is a defense, okay. But when we talk about press, we're talking about an applied force towards something, which is offensive. Now, the, the, the thing that is, so, that is so enlightening about this is if we go back to, to Philippians, uh, the, the Philippians 3, if we go back to Philippians 3, then what we see there is that Paul talks about all of his accomplishments. He talks about all of his accomplishments. He talks about his successes. But after he talks about all of his accomplishments and his successes, then he says that all of that is, is, is for naught. He said, because what I really want is I want to gain Christ. He said, so I'm going to count all of that as dung. He, says, I'm, that he said, none of that means anything for me because what I really want is to know Christ. And I want to know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. So he said, so look at this. He says, I'm already, I've already got a ticket. I'm already in a place where most people really want to be. He says, but I'm going to set all of that aside. I'm going to set all of that aside. I'm going to lay all, I'm going to put all of that behind me because where I want to be, that is not even necessary. Where I want to be, all that I have accomplished really doesn't mean anything. Because where I want to be is in the presence of God. I want to experience the power of his resurrection. And in order to experience the power of his resurrection, I must also experience the fellowship of his suffering. So he's saying, I understand what it means to struggle. I understand what it means to hurt, to be, to be in pain. I understand what it means. Look at this. This man had, had great accomplishments. But when he made a decision that he was going to walk with the Lord, amen, everything came against him. They beat him. They put him in prison. And it didn't even matter at that point that he was a Hebrew of Hebrews. It didn't matter at that, point, that point that he was very learned and, and that he was a, a man of a great integrity. Once he made a decision that he wanted to pursue, and that's what press means, to pursue, that he, once he wanted to pursue Christ, his credentials meant nothing. But did he allow the suffering that he went through, did he allow that, amen, to change his, his uh, perspective or his, his mindset on what it was that he wanted? No, he didn't. So let's just look at that one more time. We started at verse 13, but let's go back to verse 9. Philippians 3 and 9. And it says, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Why? That I may know him. Do you want to know him? Yes. 
See, that's a key scripture right there. That I may know him. Oh, my, my, my. I don't want to just know him by name. I don't want to just know his history. I, I don't want to just know about him. No, I want to know him. He says, I want to know him, and I want to know the power of his resurrection. The power of his resurrection. Can, do you understand what that means? This man was dead, and now he is alive. And Paul says, I want to know that power. I want to understand how is it that he can be laid in a tomb for three days and then be raised again to life without the help of any, any medical assistance or nobody had anything to do with it but God himself. Thank you, Lord. He says, that's what I want to know. I want to know him in the power of his resurrection and in, and in the fellowship of his sufferings because he realized that in order for him to get where Jesus is, he had to go through what Jesus went through. Thank you, Lord. In order, to, in order to attain that which Jesus had. Oh, in Ephesians, we see that, that he's been raised up and, and that we too will be raised up together with him and seated together with him in heavenly places. Oh, my. But see, we can't get there if we don't know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death. That's why, that's why Romans 12 says that, that, that we are not to be uh, uh, conformed to the world, but no, to be transformed. See, look at it. He says, don't be conformed to the world. No, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And at that point, we're conforming unto his death. Why? Because God wants to show who he is in our lives. He said that he might prove who it is that good, what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? Thank you, Lord. Go to verse 11. And he says, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had, verse 12, not as though I had already attained. Look at this. See, remember, he, he laid aside, he laid aside everything that he had accomplished. And he says, he says, not as though I had already attained, even though in somebody's book, in somebody's record, in somebody's mind, amen, he had done, he had done what most people desired to, to do and couldn't do. So he says, not as though I had already attained or either were already perfect. He says, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which I am also apprehended. Oh, my. That, that to me, you know what that reminds me of? That reminds me of Deuteronomy 28, amen, that says that the blessings of the Lord will pursue us and overtake us. See, we can run after God. Thank you, Lord. You can, we, can, we can run after God. We can, we can, we can chase after, after God. But guess what? In your chasing, his blessings will pursue, will pursue you and overtake you. I like track and field, and and every now and then when you when you when you look at some of those some of those uh, uh, long distance races like the fifteen hundred meter or or the, the 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 you know the crazy races that they run for marathons. yeah the marathons right okay every now and then you, every now and then you might find somebody that's real slow or just wears out and before you know it the person that's that's leading will catch up to them. Amen. The person in the back is trying to catch the person in front. But before you know it, the person in front passes the person in the back. Okay? And that's the same, that's the analogy that we see here. He says that, he, he says, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of. Okay? The blessings of the Lord will pursue you and overtake you 
when you have totally sold out to the Lord, when you have totally surrendered to God, and when you have totally made it up in your mind that I'm going to, not going to allow my struggle to be a struggle, but I'm going to press my way. Thank you, Lord. Read on a little bit further. Verse 13. Brethren, I count not, excuse me, brethren, I could not made myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting. Oh, my, my, how hard is it for us to forget? Forget. Forget. He said, forgetting those things which are behind. Forgetting those things. And so now, when we look at, when we look at Paul had everything to lose. So if we would take his example... Most of us have not accomplished what he accomplished in that day and time. And so what he is saying to us is that, that all my accomplishments mean nothing. I'm going to put that behind me. I'm going to forget about those things. And I'm going to reach forth unto the things which are before me. What's before you today? What's really before you? Today, where is, where is your heart? Where is your passion? Where is your love? What is really before? What is it that you're going after? What is it that you're seeking? What is it that you're desiring? And are you, and, and are you, and are you so focused on that? Oh, my. See, that reminds me, what is it? Hebrews 12. He said, we're foreseeing we come past about. So great a cloud of witnesses. Let us do what? Lay aside every weight. Every weight. Let's forget about it. Forget about it. Put those things aside. And look to Jesus. Set your focus on Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of your faith. See, this is a faith walk. It's a faith race. And the battle is not given to the, to the swift or to the, the race of the strong, but, but to him that endureth to the end. See, you got to make it to the end before you can get the prize. We've got to make it to the end, but we can't make it to the end if we're still holding on to the past. Thank you, Lord. So he says, I'm reaching forth unto those things which are before. Verse 14. Thank you, Lord. And I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I press, I press, I press, I press, I press. Are we pressing? Are we pressing? Are we pressing? We need to get to a place, saints. We need to get to a place where we stop making excuses for our lack of press. Thank you, Lord. Now, I'm going to bring it home for a minute. Okay? Just for a minute. I'm going to bring it home for a minute. Uh, I have no idea where this rumor began. But, but I was asked a few days ago by my bishop. I was asked a few days ago by my bishop to validate a concern that a national bishop had concerning our church. He was called, Bishop McCombs was called by he didn't tell me who, but by one of our natural, national bishops who was very much concerned that he heard, amen, that we had sold the church. Now, I know this is something that I've been quietly dealing with for several months, amen, because, because of the relationship that we have with Kingsway. Now, let me, let me explain something to you. See, because I see it as a lesson. 
And there are those who are among us who felt like Kingsway was coming in and taking over. No, they weren't taking over. They were possessing that which they paid for. Unlike some of us. This is our house. And we had a lease agreement. And we agreed also in that lease agreement to allow them to come in and make some changes to accommodate their needs, but also to fulfill a desire that, that, that I had, that, that Minister Stubblefield and I had been talking about for months. Well, how, man, I, man, I wish we had some, we could fly some speakers, man. I wish we had some lights. You know, all the th things that we talked about. And then they came in and said, well, we would like to lease from you, but in order for us to lease from you, in order for it to work for us, we've got to make some changes. And what we'd like to do is we'd like to spend some money to improve your house. Okay. And so, no, they didn't come in and take over. But they spent money to be here. And, and, when, they, and when they leave, guess what? The improvements are still here. But here's the key. The key is, there's, there's some of, there are some, I'm going to just say it point blank, that are intimidated by their presence. No. And so if you look at this, so now here, so you're struggling with their presence when you need to be pressing. And when service starts at 11 o'clock, Amen. You need to show up at 1030 and let your presence be made known so they'll know that, okay, we're ready to come in and have worship now. But instead, we show up at 1130, 1145, 12 o'clock, or maybe don't show up at all because we feel like they taking over. So you're, so you're giving more attention to your, the struggle that you have in your mind as opposed to pressing your way in. Oh my. And I hope whoever it is that, 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 that put that, I hope you're hearing me today. I hope you're hearing me today. Amen. No, this is our house. It's our house. And I thank God for them. Because they came at a time when we needed help. Yeah, we had to make some adjustments. Amen. But it's only temporary. It's only temporary. And so, and so, now, so now, look at this. Now go to that next scripture, 2 Timothy. Let's go back to 2 Timothy. I hope, I hope I'm saying something to encourage somebody today. Yes, 2 Timothy 2. Uh, okay, so 2 Timothy 2, and begin reading at verse 3. Thou therefore endure hardness mm. as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Thou therefore, say right there for a minute, verse 3. Thou therefore endure hardness. Endure hardness. What did Paul say? He says, I want to know him in the power of the resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. Endure hardness as a good soldier. Thank you, Lord. Endure hardness. In other words, be prepared to go through. Be prepared to go through. Be prepared to experience some uncomfortable moments. Be prepared to do that. Because verse 4 says that no man that warreth 
entangled himself with the affairs of this life. Like my daddy would say, y'all need to stop talking so much. So what would he say, Lily? He said, shut your mouth. Okay? Because, see, if you, if you really want to be a part of who we are and what it is that we're doing, then we need to be of the same mind. We need to be of the same mind. We need to be speaking the same language. And so when somebody comes up to you and say, what's going on down there at Healy Wings? I heard that you need to say, Baba, what you heard ain't what it is. If you really want to know, we got service at 11 o'clock. Come on and check us out. Okay, no, don't, don't perpetuate the lie. Don't perpetuate by saying, well, you know, I don't know. They, you know, they, they just, you know, I don't know. Well, okay, you don't know, you don't know. But don't perpetuate it. No, don't be involved. Don't engage yourself in the foolishness, the foolish thing. Okay, so he says, no man that warreth entangles himself. Why would, you, why would you submit yourself to the struggle? He said, no man that warreth entangles himself with the affairs of this life. Let me help you with something again. Amen, as I shared with you before, amen, we've come out of the world and now we're in the word. We've come out of the world and now we're in the word. We've come out of the world, W-O-R-L-D, and now we're in the word, W-O-R-D. The difference between the world and the word is the letter L, which is life. Life happens to all of us. But the only way to overcome the world and its lifestyle is to be into the word where Jesus says, I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Life is not going to become an entanglement to me, but it's going to become a blessing to me. Thank you, Lord. So he says that no man warreth entangle himself again with the affairs of this life. God has delivered you from gossiping. God has delivered you, amen, from carrying a bone. Amen. Or as my daddy would say, if you receive a bone, you carry a bone. So when you allow folk to speak negative into you, you will continue to carry on that which you allow to happen to you. Oh, my, my. This must be a daddy moment or a bishop moment for y'all. It's a daddy moment for me. Okay? So he says, no man that warreth entangled himself with the affairs of this life. Why? That he may please him who have chosen him. Oh, my. See, that's the key right there. If you really want to please God. If you want to please God, then you cannot engage or involve yourself in things that displease God. That's, that's, that's the key. That's the key right there. Lord, I want to please you. And look at this. See, oh my, my, my. Look at this. When Job was a man, a man who pleased God with his life. Job, Job, Job was a man, a man who eschewed, they say, eschewed evil. Well, probably one of the only times that you'll hear that word used in just, in, in just a natural uh, conversation unless you are an engineer or an architect. Because it is an architectural term, eschewed, a man, and eschewed uh, 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 refers to a, a wall, okay, that's, that's, that's not perpendicular, amen, to the wall that it's attached to. Okay? So here I am. Here Job is right here. And where that Camry is, amen, is, 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 is truth. Or uh, rather, where that Camry is, is evil. All of us are walking the same pathway of life. Okay? But he sees evil ahead. So he's going to avoid it at all costs. He's going to keep walking but he's not going to walk in the direction of evil. 
So he eschewed evil. See, most of the, the nature of man, the nature of man being sinful as it is, amen, we would have the, 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 the propensity, amen, to just go towards a thing, amen, just to see what it's all about. Even though we may not want to engage. But we see a ruckus. We see a crowd. We see smoke. We want to see what it's all about. That's just the nature of man. And so life offers us those types of enticements. And so we just want to see what it's all about. Now, unfortunately, not everybody is strong enough to see and walk away. So Job said, I ain't going to go even see. He said, I'm going to stay clear. Now, why am I telling you this? I'm telling you this because when we read that scripture that says that he may please him who have chosen him, look at this, God chose Job. And then when the devil was looking for somebody to tempt, to devour, God said, have you considered my servant that I have chosen whose name is Job? which says to me, Missionary Williams, that every single one of us could be on that hit list if we're pleasing God. Oh, my. See, because God, again, he wants to prove who he is in the earth through your life. So, so if he says, now it's your turn, to be challenged, it's your turn to go through. It's your turn, and I need you to be a strong witness. It's your turn. And it's not for you to say, well, you, you, you just don't understand. No, I do understand. So we need to just kind of get that one out. Just, we just need to dismiss that, that whole phrase from our, from our vocabulary. Because sometimes when we're going through, we, make, we start making excuses like, well, well, Pastor, you just don't understand. No, I do understand. <laughs> Obviously, you don't understand. Because if you understood, then you would know that when you surrendered your will to the Lord, your life is no longer your own. It belongs to him. And if he chooses to say, have you chosen my servant, Kevin Ellis? Kevin Ellis, he's a praying man. He's a believing man. He's, he's, he trusts you with all of his heart. See, the devil already knows. He already, he already has got your, he's already peeped your bio. That's what he told God. That's what he said about Job. He said, he said, he, he, he ain't, ain't going to curse you. You gave him everything that he needs. And so, so God said, okay, I'll tell you what. I'm going to let you touch some things, but just don't touch his life. Okay? So, so that was a setup. It was a setup, one, to let us know that as we read the scriptures, that we can be encouraged that God will likewise cover us even as he covered Job. And he will return, he will restore everything that has, the devil has tried to take or has taken. Thank you, Lord. What the canker worms have destroyed. Hallelujah. He says, I'm going to give it back. Thank you, Lord. God is great. He's awesome. He said, but all I want you to do is not entangle yourself. Don't, don't insist on struggling with this life. No. Don't struggle. Let it go. Let it go. Learn how to, and it's a learning process. It's a learned behavior. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So here we are today. I, mean, I think there might be one more scripture I want you to see. Yes, let's continue. What, what, verse, what verse is that? Okay, skip down. Uh, go 
But let's just read through, okay? Verse 5. And if a man also strives for masteries, yet is he not crowned except he strive lawfully. The husbandman that laboreth must be first partaker of the fruits. Consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding. Look at this. Consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel, wherein I suffer trouble. Okay? I suffer. Wherein I suffer. Because you tell the truth, you're going to go through. Because you live the truth, you are a moving target for the enemy. Wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer. Go back to verse 9. As an evildoer, even the bonds, but the word of God is not bound. Oh, my, my. Thank you, Lord. Just pause right there for a second. Look at this. He says the word of God is not bound. On Wednesday night, we talked about that the boundaries. Okay, that right now you might feel like you, you, that, that there are some boundaries that you can't go beyond. Yet you're being blessed. Okay, yet you're being blessed. The Lord is yet moving in your life. Amen. And there, yeah, there, there, are some, there are some boundaries that are there. Amen. But God is still moving. But look at this. At some point, God is going to remove the boundaries. Okay, because, oh, it's just like we, we used to, uh, uh, let's say 15, 20 years ago, everybody was on the prayer of Jabez. And so everybody was praying this prayer. Okay, enlarge my territory. Well, all God wants you to do is to just be obedient to his word. Amen. The territory will be enlarged. I know some of you have experienced an enlarged territory. Thank you, Lord. Okay, so look at this. He says, there, yet there, there are bounds or boundaries, he says, but the word of God is not bound. Hallelujah. The word of God is not bound. So everything that you have need of will come to you by way of the word of God. When the word is alive in you, amen, and you continue to adhere to the word of God, God is going to supply every need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Why? Because of the word. Because of the word. Thank you, Lord. All right, go on to verse 10. He said, therefore, I endure. Therefore, I endure all things. All things for the elect's sake. Uh-oh, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. The elect's sake. Wait a minute. Not my family? Not my sake? No, he's saying for the elect's sake. See, some of us really have a problem with doing things for the sake of others. Oh, that, yeah, yeah. Then a hush came over the crowd. <laughs> for the elect's sake. Look at what he's saying. He says, what I do, I do it for the sake of those that are coming behind me. I do it for the sake of those who are walking with me. I do it for the sake of those who also love the Lord, who may be weaker than I am. See, that's why, that's why what Paul said in terms of, of forgetting those things. Remember, he laid out his, his resume, amen, which was, was, was explicit, amen. He laid it out, amen. It was exemplary. He laid it out. But then he says, I'm going to put it all behind me. And he did that for the elect's sake. He did it for the sake of those who would read. He did it for the sake of those who would see and observe his life, letting them know that even though I've accomplished all those things, you may never accomplish that, but don't worry about it. I'm going to set mine aside so we can be on an equal plane. So if I can go in and, and obtain God's grace and favor, so can you. So now... Timothy is saying that, that he likewise will endure all things for the elect's sake that they may also obtain salvation. He's living his life for others. It's not about him. We need to get over it. Oh my. It's not about you. 
I think probably one of the first, one of the first verses of scripture that, that we as a people heard and, and, and maybe questioned but, but didn't talk a whole lot about was when Jesus said, if they slap you, give them the other cheek. We didn't really want to know what that meant. Because there ain't too many people in this room, I think, right now, that's going to allow somebody to just walk up to them and slap them. I don't know who you are, but I don't think it's too many of us. And, and then, yeah, and then give them the other cheek. Say, do it again, do it again. Okay, but look at what he's saying. He says, all that I do, I do it for the elect's sake that they also may be where I am. That they might obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Verse 11, it is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. Dead things don't fight back. Mm. It's a whole nother message. Okay? Dead things don't fight back. You can punch it, you can you can punch a corpse as many times as you want. You can you can cuss them out as much as you want. They ain't gonna talk back, they ain't gonna punch back. Dead things don't don't respond. But guess what? We can be dead in Christ and alive unto holiness. Thank you, Lord. Verse 12, and we're gonna end it here. Maybe we won't. Maybe verse 8. Okay, if we suffer, if we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. Verse 13, if we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, because he cannot deny himself. Thank you, Lord. Come on and give God some praise. Is anybody ready to stop struggling? Amen. Ready to start pressing? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Turn your struggle into a press. And the easiest way to do that is by giving God thanks. That in the midst of your struggle, in the midst of your suffering, that you're able to say, Lord, I thank you. In spite of it all, God, I thank you. Yes. Regardless of what it is that they say, what it is that I'm going through, Lord, I thank you. I praise you, God. God, I know, oh Lord God, that you who have begun a good work in me is able to perform it until the end. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Lord. We just got to talk to ourselves sometimes. We've got to encourage ourselves sometimes. Thank you, Lord, that God, you know, I know you got it, God. Hallelujah. I know you got it, Lord God. I know you got it, Lord. I know you got it, Lord. Thank you, God. Lord God, I'm not going to forget where you brought me from, Lord. I know you, God. Hallelujah, God. I'm not going to forget what you brought me out of, God. Hallelujah. I'm not going to forget the times, oh Lord God, when they counted me out. But God, you raised me up. Thank you, God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Bless the name of God. Bless the name. Thank you, Lord. We thank God and we praise him today for what he has done and for what he's going to do. We're going to continue to believe and trust that there is a greater work in store for us. Believe in it. Yes, God and God alone is able. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Deacon Tom, would you do me a favor, sir? Would you go and see... Um, where they are in their process uh, because we're going to do communion this morning. I don't want them to miss out on communion. Thank you, Lord. Church, this is our time. What do I mean by that? It's our time because we're living in a world who is hurting. We're living in a world who is starving. Thank you, Lord. The hymn that says, uh, the world is hungry for a living word. Lift the Savior up for him to see. 
Jesus said, if I and I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. We're living in a time when the, 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 the harvest is ripe. But the laborers are few. Thank you, Lord. And so it's an opportunity for us to regain our, our senses and our strength and make a commitment like we've never made before that we yield ourselves to the Lord to be used by him, not just to fill these seats, but to increase the, the population of those who are heavenly bound. Thank you, Lord. And in that, I believe that these seats will be filled. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, we don't, we don't know exactly what's going to happen a year and a half from now, but my prayer is, my prayer is that by 2024, by the spring of 2024, that we'll, be able, that we'll be ready to occupy our house fully. And that this opportunity that God has given us, this, this three-year period that the Lord has given us, is a grace period. Amen. So that we can get some things in order. And position ourselves to receive the mega blessing that God has for us. Thank you, Lord. But it's going to take us pressing our way. It's going to take us enduring some things. But in all of that, more so than anything else, having like-mindedness. We must be of the same mind. We must speak the same language. We must pursue the same goals. Thank you, Lord. Does anybody agree with me this morning? Thank you, Lord. Come on, let's give God praise. Father, we thank you, O oh Lord God, this opportunity that you've given us to come before your presence on today, Lord, to hear a word from you, God, and to be encouraged, O oh God, by that word. Lord, I thank you. I thank you, God, for the power of your anointing, O oh God, that's in this place right now. I thank you, Lord God, for the lives that have been transformed, O oh God. I thank you for the, for the encouragement the inspiration that we've received on today. And Lord God, I'm believing and trusting, Lord, that as we go from this place, oh Lord God, that we would go, oh God, with a fervency, oh Lord God, with a, uh, a drive and a, with a press, Lord God, to accomplish those things which will bring you glory. God, we thank you today. Hallelujah that it's not about us, but it's all about you. We thank you today, God, in the name of Jesus. Minister to the need of your people, O oh God. Touch us, O oh Lord God. And Father, as we participate in this communion, in this supper today, God, we pray that you would bless, O oh God, these elements. Bless, O oh God, that which represents your body, that which represents your blood. And Father, and as we partake of, O oh Lord God, this sacrament today. Lord, I thank you for the healing virtue, the healing that will, that will take place in our bodies. I thank you, Lord God, for the peace that will be restored to us. I thank you, Lord God, for the joy, the joy, oh God, in the name of Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done, all that you're doing, oh God, for you're a great God. You're an awesome wonder. And Lord God, we say yes to your will, oh God. Yes to your way, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. It's about letting everyone know there is a God. The Bible says that the fool has said in